Howdy. Have you ever been to a fast food joint and been disappointed, unsatisfied? Well, don't feel bad because it turns out you are definitely not alone. Today, we're going to look at the fast food chains with the absolute lowest ratings in customer reviews and polls. It might be because of bad customer service, overly expensive prices, a dirty store, or maybe just straight bad tasting food, or maybe all of the above. We'll check customer satisfaction polls to see which chain truly has the most toilet level reputation but also just regular old reviews from sites like Yelp or Google Reviews, that sort of thing. So let's check out the six lowest rated fast food chains. And obviously these customer complaints don't apply to every fast food restaurant. This is just the general consensus I found across opinion polls, studies, and customer reviews. And I hope your experience with your local fast food joints is much better than these customers had. And if you are working at one of these fast food joints, please don't take my riffing to heart. I'm only criticizing the business and certainly not you as a person. Working in fast food chains is not an easy job. It's probably an understaffed, stressful workplace. And with that said, let's begin. And starting with number six, we have Wendy's. Oh dear Wendy's, customer satisfaction surveys have found Wendy's scored lower than any other restaurant chain. The only place that came even close to topping their customer dissatisfaction was McDonald's, and well, more on that train wreck later. This doesn't appear to be a new problem either. Wendy's has consistently ranked lowest for years for their customer service. But when you go to Wendy's, do they at least get your order right? Well, probably not, because Wendy's has been found to get their orders wrong nearly a quarter of the time. It's like Russian roulette, but Wendy's forgot to pack the bullets. But is getting the wrong order the only thing that's making customers unhappy at Wendy's? What is it about that Wendy's brand that keeps customers coming back so miserable? Surely it can't be that bad. Well, this InTouch study painted a sad picture for Wendy's friendliness. 40% of their staff were considered either neutral or rude. But this is the kind of thing I'd rather hear from actual people on. Fortunately, the Wendy's Facebook page offers reviews all across their stores all over the USA. And I'm sure they'll give us a clear, positive response. Oh, oh, we're just jumping right into it, aren't we? Based on 53,000 reviews, Wendy's has managed a one-star average rating. Do you realize how mathematically unlikely that is over 53,000 reviews? Wendy's deserves a freaking Nobel Prize for that consistent level of bad quality. According to online reviews, this one-star rating seems to be a combination of long wait times, cold food, dirty eating areas, rude employees, and of course, the wrong order. Let's see what some of the people had to say. Shane said, the staff here show no interest in customers and don't even try to have fast service. They have the worst attitude and foul language when children are listening. And Rebecca said, Terrible! The place in Ferdinand was so gross and dirty. They had food all over the floors, the service was terrible, no ice, no napkins. I used to love Wendy's, but not anymore. Never again. And we have a review from Misty. What does she have to say? Waited over 25 minutes, then waited another 10 minutes inside while watching 15 cars get their order. Staff were also throwing a lot of attitude. This is an issue I found in my own experience as well. I hate sitting, so I never take the drive through. Quite often, I'll watch the drive through get prioritized over people who walk in, which is always a bit frustrating. And finally, we have Sarah's opinion. What does she have to say? If I'm going to spend $30 on three meals at a fast food restaurant, I expect at the very least that my order will be warm and correct, both of which cannot be expected from Wendy's apparently. Never mind the horrible attitude that the employees always seem to have. Um, honestly, it, it was actually pretty hard to even find a positive Facebook review of Wendy's. Hopefully though, you haven't had this experience at your local Wendy's. From what I'm seeing here, some Wendy's may just need some more money towards training staff or just having more staff on site. From things like cleaning to just having a staff member purely to make sure orders are correct. Because the cost of getting a quarter of all their orders wrong? Well, that's the kind of reputation that crushes a regular business. And at number five, we have Domino's. You may not believe it nowadays, but there was a time where eating pizza was considered a gourmet, classy dine-in experience. 
or at least a comfortable experience. Like, for example, if you went to Pizza Hut in the 90s, you'd be shown to your seat by a waiter in a well-clean restaurant. Sports teams could drown their losses or celebrate their victories with some greasy pizza pie comfort food. In Australia, we were sat down, given plates, and access to a buffet of unlimited pizza, pasta, and as much soda as we could drink. It was all you can eat for five bucks. In America or Australia, pizza was mostly just a nice experience. But nowadays, of course, dine-in pizza is way less popular. And at Domino's, the experience has always been about the same. You get served by an overworked, tired staff member who's currently in the process of cooking five pizzas while serving you. Rather than a nice dining room, you see a messy, frantic kitchen behind them. The poor overworked staff member takes your order wrong, you wait 20 minutes, and realize they forgot to call your name to say your pizza was ready. And finally, you open up a broken, lousy-looking pizza shoved in a box. Eat it and get out. Maybe this is the more profitable business style for pizza? But it sure isn't a more pleasant experience for customers. This brings me to customer satisfaction. When looking at it, some studies have found something quite shocking. These studies found that the customer service and customer experience got worse every year. And perhaps this is most apparent in places like Domino's. In fact, Domino's claims the prize for owning the lowest rated fast food restaurant in America. One of the Domino's New York branches managed a rating of two. And this was the lowest rated fast food restaurant that Gates Research could find. Apparently, Domino's Pizza is also among the least preferred pizzas. The real researcher did a study of 20,000 pizza companies around the world, and they found over 50% of customers prefer the taste of Pizza Hut pizza the best. So even though Domino's Pizza is beating Pizza Hut in sales, apparently a lot of those people would rather be eating Pizza Hut pizza. So what are customers' main complaints with Domino's? Well, I found a few consistent complaints on Google reviews and Yelp. Heitcher said, Don't order here. My pizza never arrived. I called on the phone and they said there was no manager and hung up. Super rude. Avoid ordering. Seth wasn't much happier. He said, It took one hour and 40 minutes to get my order. Pizza looked terrible. Very rude on the phone. Then we have a review from Claire on Facebook. Absolutely disgusting service. Waited nearly two hours and when it arrived, it was freezing cold. Waste of money and no help from the manager. Finally, Andrew said, Ordered one pizza and wedges. Food took a whole hundred minutes to arrive. No apology was given when we spoke to the store. Almost constantly, all the complaints I could find included long wait times and often rude staff. So it seems Domino's need to work on their cold pizza, long wait times, and unprofessional service. But again, hopefully this hasn't been your experience with Domino's. And coming in at number four, Burger King. Burger King may be the home of the flame grill burger, but it has a surprising amount of criticism. In fact, a study of fast food was done on Twitter, and when tallying up the tweets, it turned out that Burger King was the least favorite fast food chain in all of America. The whole thing surprised me though. Really? How did Burger King receive this much animosity when McDonald's exists? Well, what's our trusty study by InTouch Insights say? Well, apparently order accuracy was okay at 86%. I mean, that's not okay that more than 1 in 10 orders are wrong, but Wendy's managed to get 2 in 10 orders wrong, so, you know, my expectations are pretty low. 1 out of 10 customers unsatisfied. Again, that's not great, but that's okay for fast food. With their customer service not being outstandingly bad, I was still puzzled. How did Burger King get this hated across the internet? But then I realized they have had some bad, absolutely abysmal ad campaigns over the years. Their reputation's basically in the toilet because of all these. I mean, obviously there's the horse meat scandal, which I already talked about in another video. If you haven't heard me talk about it, basically one of Burger King's factories was found to have trace amounts of horse meat. But to be fair, it was McDonald's factory too. Burger King was unaware of this, took responsibility, and dumped the supplier. While McDonald's didn't dump the supplier at all. Big surprise, moving on. 
But then there's Burger King's many dreaded advertising bungles. There was an ad where they got any Google Nest or phone that heard it to list off everything that's in a Whopper burger. Okay, Google, what is the Whopper burger? Never mind, sorry, Google. Uh, sorry if that's at yours off too. The Whopper is the signature hamburger and an associated product line sold by the international. And yeah, it was kind of annoying, but that alone doesn't really explain this toilet level reputation. Then there was their Whopper Virgin campaign, which I already talked about with Nostalgia Critic a while ago. There was backlash to this because Burger King was essentially going out to remote communities, some of which were starving, to request from them a freaking Whopper taste test. While they're doing Burger King a favor, why not a little clean water while they're at it, guys? This was another thorn in their reputation. Then, because apparently the Whopper still hadn't caused enough trouble yet, there was the Whopper Sacrifice campaign. And this one really sealed the deal on their garbage internet reputation. In fact, there's a reasonable chance you were a victim of this internet campaign too. Because Burger King offered a free Whopper to anyone who deleted 10 Facebook friends. And if that wasn't bad enough, the Burger King app would then send these 10 ex-friends a message. They told them that their friendship was only worth one-tenth of the price of a hamburger. Which, in the age of isolation and loneliness? That is just obnoxiously evil. And you can bet your smudge screen that a lot of friends were deleted. Luckily, Facebook did step in and they disabled the Whopper Sacrifice app. They said it was a violation of user privacy because of the message that was sent to each unfriended user. But it did take Facebook 10 days to do this. And within that time, 200,000 friends were deleted and 200,000 messages were sent, making a lot of people have really miserable days. 10 days, good to see your security moving fast there, Facebook. Frankly, after learning about this last ad campaign, I'm afraid I've lost a lot of my sympathy for Burger King. Twitter, I will probably never say this again, but you might be onto something by considering Burger King the worst fast food chain. Personally, I don't consider the Whopper Sacrifice campaign the kind of behavior you should forget in someone, yet alone that behavior in a company. In fact, I think I'll skip my Whopper and just make a peanut butter sandwich. <coughs> and coming in at number three, we have Starbucks. Ah, Starbucks. Where better to- Well, of course they're a fast food chain. They sell fatty foods, sugary beverages, and they probably contributed to the obesity epidemic. Well, what if we ask Google? Yes, Starbucks is considered fast food. Huh, hmm, I guess it is. As I was saying, where better to go for a mediocre, burnt, overly expensive coffee than Starbucks? It's renowned for being slightly better coffee than McDonald's. But it's perhaps most renowned for having jacked up prices. Seven dollars for one? Y'all don't have a student discount or something? Hey, Starbucks isn't a drink, okay? It's a lifestyle. The price criticism of Starbucks is so mainstream that it's actually a joke in the Lego movie. Drink overpriced coffee! There you go, that's $37. Awesome. And unfortunately, customer satisfaction has been an issue in many branches. For example, an empirical study in 2022 found many disappointed Starbucks customers. The two main complaints they found were too high prices and subpar beverage quality. And when Chinese researchers do an entire study on how bad your coffee is, you probably need to step up your game. In some branches anyway, low customer satisfaction has been an ongoing problem for Starbucks for many years. When we look at Statistica, we can actually see the customer satisfaction over the last 16 years. And on average, one in four Starbucks customers were unsatisfied. In fact, there's an entire Wikipedia article dedicated to all the criticisms of Starbucks over the years. I think it's worth mentioning though, I haven't personally had any complaints with the staff. Usually, they've been okay. I mean, I did get water for a homeless person once and they did ask me to buy their stupid bottled water. But apart from that, they've mostly been okay. Most of the time, my complaint has been the same as the Chinese study, their drinks. To me, whenever I've tasted a Starbucks coffee, often it's just tasted bitter and kind of burnt. I don't know if this has to do with their coffee machine or their beans, but I was a barista for 10 years when I worked at BP, and I just never felt the coffee we made tasted this bitter. Maybe the beans, I don't know, that's just my opinion. And these results obviously don't reflect everyone. Some people swear by Starbucks coffee and that's fine. But it seems to be a smaller portion of people that like Starbucks coffee than I realized. 
So if not everyone likes Starbucks coffee, why do they keep drinking it? Well, I think like McDonald's, Starbucks coffee has the advantage of just being ubiquitous. It's everywhere. So maybe some of these sales are based on convenience rather than taste. But what do the actual people say? Well, let's see if we can find some consistent complaints to find out what's going on. This time our reviews are from Yelp and Trusted Pilot. Kelsey says, If you walk in, they take forever. Okay, so slow ordering. What about Rachel? How about not complaining to your customers when they go through the drive through That would indeed be good. What does John say? I've been here for 20 minutes plus and they still haven't taken my order. Long wait times are a consistent problem. What about James? This location is a stinking ship. They either have an oven broken so your food takes forever or they're out of something. And finally from Anthony. Ready company, I'm done. <laughs> Best opening ever. They raise their prices, but continue to have cheap lids that pop off. Now they double the Starbucks points for a cup of coffee to 100 stars. Where the customers ordered a frappe, iced tea, coffee, whatever, the complaints often seem to be the same. Long wait times for overpriced coffee that just doesn't taste that good. But again, if you like Starbucks beverages yourself, more power to you. And for the second lowest rated restaurant, we have Taco Bell. Huh, I actually have heard of Taco Bell having a bad reputation before. Partially from scandals, from things like their meat having too much soy and oats in it. But scandals aside, how do people actually feel about their Taco Bell experience? Well, how do I put this? It's not a pretty picture. I don't like doing it! According to SiteJabber, Taco Bell has managed a two-star rating. In fact, everything about them got two stars. Except for shipping, which was one and a half for some reason. And based on reviews, people's complaints generally focused around the food. For example, Desiree said, Very poor service and very poor food. Our food has so much grease in it, we can't even eat it. It just falls apart. Order is always wrong. This place has gone downhill. Bad. And this outrage review from Sage truly clinches it. He says, I love tacos. Taco Bell makes me happy and helps my mental health. It's delicious. I would marry Taco Bell if I could. Well, to be fair, Sage, there's probably not much competition there. You're probably, in fact, the only person to call Taco Bell back after the first date. But honestly, I'm very glad to see someone getting some joy from Taco Bell. But the next review from Shay and seemingly everyone else seems to paint a less glamorous picture. My tacos are ruined. Oh no, your tacos are ruined? Yeah. People decide to put sour cream in my tacos and now they're ruined because I hate sour cream. Oh, the humanity, not the dreaded sour cream. I hope you're all right, Shay. That must have been very traumatic for you. Okay, okay, so maybe reviews don't always give us a good picture of reputation, but statistics still do. On Statistica's site, we can see a graph of Taco Bell's customer satisfaction over the last 22 years. And it turns out Taco Bell has always had a subpar reputation. In fact, in the year 2000, two in every five customers were unsatisfied. But as of 2012, they've wavered around only a quarter of their customers unsatisfied, which is... A marginal improvement. What concerned me most though was when I found a study on Taco Bell employees. In basic things like going without rest breaks, but also 50% going off the clock with unpaid overtime. And half of them were minors. It's not a wonder some of these employees struggle with putting a smile on their face with customers. Look carefully at the I really wish I weren't here right now button. I want to reprimand the area manager just reading this. Overall, most Taco Bell seem to take issue with the food rather than the customer service. And this reflects my own experience too. In the past, I've gotten sick from eating food from Taco Bell. But in the times I've been there, the staff have been very friendly. It's a shame the food they served me gave me food poisoning. Otherwise, it would have been a nice experience. I've personally found the staff though very friendly. But after seeing the lousy treatment some of these staff have to put up with, well, respects for them for keeping a smile on their face for customers. Oh, okay, one more review. This one's from Anthony in Coffeeville. This Taco Bell is literal butt cheeks. The drive through lady was not nice. They didn't cut our quesadillas and it looked like someone came in them. What? Zero stars. This is not the service I expect from such a fine establishment. And you can probably guess the number one lowest rated fast food chain is McDonald's. 
I mean, does anyone actually like a McDonald's? Most customers don't like it. Staff often don't like working there. I guess the CEO likes the place. Despite being the most popular fast food chain in the world with over 39,000 restaurants and 68 million customers a day, McDonald's simultaneously manages to be the most hated fast food chain in the world. And well, where do I start with why? What? Alongside Coca-Cola, they're basically leading the childhood obesity epidemic with their energy dense food. But let's look at this like any other fast food chain. Let's look at the customer satisfaction from real researcher and their valiant efforts to positively frame these sad results. They highlight that nearly 40% of their customers were satisfied with their food. Oh boy, that means only six out of 10 customers were unsatisfied with their food. Like every study I found seemed to be trying to paint a rosy picture of McDonald's. But their study results are just such unsalvageable train wrecks. What about customer service? Well, it's probably not a huge surprise to you by now, but McDonald's manages more unfriendly customer service than any other fast food chain. In fact, in InTouch's study, more than half the employees were considered unfriendly or neutral. A study by PMQ found the similar sad results of Real Researcher. One in every three customers were leaving unsatisfied. With this toilet level reputation, it boggles my mind how McDonald's manages to stay the most popular fast food chain in the world. It surprised me how much lower ranked McDonald's was on friendliness in particular. However, as I noted with Domino's, this is actually an ongoing problem amongst many fast food chains over the years. At this rate, by 2060, staff will just kick me in the groin to say hello. Again though, I don't personally blame all the staff for this. Every time I go to McDonald's, I see staff working frantically with constant beeping in their ears for overdue orders. No one seems to stop for long as staff frantically put together 20 orders for the drive through Personally, I still remember how hard it was to keep smiling when I was in an overworked, stressful, understaffed work environment. It's exhausting, and when I see a McDonald's staff member, I just want to give them a break from the insanity. Severely understaffed is how a lot of these fast food chains roll, and it's a real problem. How's the food though? I mean, they're known for their Big Mac, right? Or are they just known for the Big Mac because it's been shoved in our faces in advertising for our entire lifetimes? The vast majority of people ate there purely out of convenience. And honestly, who can blame them? For the modern millennial family, often both parents have to be working. So free time for these parents isn't always easy. And McDonald's is very convenient being 24 hours, having playgrounds, happy meals, and kids tend to like it. But let's hear straight from the people. What do McDonald's customers say? Ah, 1.5 star rating. That's the McDonald's I grew up with. Let's start with Henry. The ice cream machine here is always broken, man. Food is somehow even lower quality than other McDonald's. The nuggets tend to be cold and feel old. Almost leathery in texture, man. Buns taste old and stale. The meat tastes a bit too frozen in the freezer. Like it's maybe been there a few months too long, you know. And next up is Yadira. The service here sucks. The bar is low when it comes to McDonald's, so you have to really disappoint for a one star rating. I love how the reputation is already zero on McDonald's food and service, yet they still somehow managed to disappoint customers. But let's look at another McDonald's restaurant. What does Bethany from Kentucky say? All of my fries and chicken were either undercooked or burnt. And finally, here's a thought-provoking review from Game of Urmum. Do is no go here is very no good food. Me is order burger, but guys say which burger? Plus me is mad. Worst service ever. Why no understand? Me want burger. Burger is no has ketchup. Me mad at McDonald's. You want to get some McDonald's? Well, thanks for hanging out with me. My hope is you might have found something interesting or maybe even learned something. The polls and studies I looked at obviously didn't include every fast food chain. So if you have your own opinion on these chains, or you think another fast food chain deserves to be in this list, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. Hopefully, I might see you next time. Bye bye. 
and a special thanks to all the channel members and the channel super members, including Michael Fegan, EM5345, that's quite of a mouthful of a name, Wild Wingnut, and Mewtwo Shadow FNAF. Feels like a bizarre combination of Generation Z and Generation Alpha's favorite things.